on a Madam Harrington from Learn Your Land. I'm hanging out here in the woods in western Pennsylvania on a very cold day and in this brief video I'd like to introduce you to a few species of mushrooms and other fungi that are very frequently overlooked. You know this time of year is probably not the best time to get out and look for choice edible mushrooms, fruiting bodies of choice edible mushrooms like fresh morels, fresh chanterelles, maitake, chicken of the woods, lion's mane. You might find fresh oysters, you might find fresh enoki, but the other ones probably not so much. So what's an avid mushroom hunter supposed to do this time of year? Just give up completely? Maybe take up shopping? Well before you subject yourself to that alternative, consider brushing up on your winter mushroom identification skills. You know, this kingdom of life comprises some of the world's greatest decomposers and recyclers in our ecosystem. And this decomposition process does not stop completely in the winter months. It might slow down a good bit right now, but it does not stop completely. And in this video, I'd like to introduce you to a few species that remind us that this kingdom of life is very much alive and well all year round, even in the winter months. There's something interesting going on with this log right here. You might be saying, Adam, it's just a decaying log. What could be so fascinating about that? Well, upon closer inspection, you see these black shoestring-like strands that are running up and down this log, on the top, on the sides, and on the bottom. So what the heck are these black shoestring-like strands? What are they doing? Why are they here? Well, these are known as rhizomorphs, and rhizomorphs are root-like structures that are produced by various species of fungi. They're actually dense mats of aggregated hyphae in these black shoestring-like strands that are found all over the hardwood forest here in western Pennsylvania and in the temperate regions of the world. They're rhizomorphs produced by a certain genus known as armillaria. Armillaria, that might not mean much to many people, however, maybe you're familiar with the mushrooms that armillaria gives rise to. These are the classic honey mushrooms. Honey mushrooms are choice edible mushrooms that are found later in the year, August, September, October, November. They're ones that I like to seek out every year. They're really not hard to find. They're one of the most common fungi found in these forests. But because I've seen these rhizomorphs here, that means that armillaria is all around this log right here. So it's inside this log and it'll probably give rise to these fruiting bodies. So I will come back later in the year and look for these mushrooms and I'll harvest them. I'll eat them because they're very good, they're very tasty. They kind of resemble shiitake mushrooms in taste and texture. If you're not familiar with honey mushrooms, they're not really a beginner's mushroom because they might resemble a potentially toxic look-alike, which is the deadly gallerina. I'll link to a video that I recently produced that will help you discern between the honey mushroom and the deadly gallerina. But because I've seen these rhizomorphs, I know that honey mushrooms will probably be here later in the year. Now, armillaria is a globally recognized genus because it is responsible for something known as armillaria root disease or shoestring root rot, which is one of the most persistent and serious threats to our trees in the temperate regions of the world. Sometimes in the tropical regions, but mainly in the temperate regions of the world. Honey mushrooms or armillaria, they parasitize trees. So once they get into a tree, they can be responsible for crown thinning, they can be responsible for branch dieback. They're not always the primary killers of trees. They can parasitize a tree and weaken it so that perhaps a secondary environmental condition like drought or stress or bacteria or fungal infestation can eventually bring this tree down. And they usually afflict younger trees. Older trees seem to be more resistant. But honey mushrooms are not just parasites. They also act as saprophytes, helping to break down dead or decaying organic material. That's what's going on with this log right here. But even some research shows that not only may they be parasites, not only may they be saprophytes, but they may also be mycorrhizal fungi, meaning that they can shuttle nutrients between it and plants in the forest. And what the research shows is that perhaps armillaria shuttles nutrients between it and non-photosynthetic plants in the forest. So parasites, saprophytes, mycorrhizal fungi, this characterizes the armillaria genus. And again, these rhizomorphs are root-like structures produced by the armillaria genus. And so if you find these in the forest, maybe come back later in the year, late summer through early fall, and look for the choice edible mushrooms that it produces, which are the honey mushrooms. Right across from the armillaria rhizomorphs, they came across another beautiful and very interesting fungus. This is a crust fungus right here, known as Xylobulus frustulatus, or ceramic parchment. This is a crust fungus that you will find on oak trees and other hardwood trees, but primarily oak trees. And it resembles broken pieces of ceramic tile. And each broken piece kind of looks like a frustule. A frustule is the cell wall of a diatom or unicellular algae. And that's where the species name comes from, frustulatus. So if you look at a picture of the two, a frustule and this crust fungus right here, you will see that they look like one another. So what's going on with this fungus? Why is it here? What's it doing? Well, it's helping to break down this oak tree, and it's a white rot fungus. They're a brown rot fungi, they're a soft rot fungi. This is a white rot 
fungus in that it helps to break down the lignin and then the cellulose and the hemicellulose as well. All three of these are plant cell wall compounds. So this is a huge oak tree. This is just the end of a branch, but it starts all the way up here. And I actually found some armillary rhizomorphs on this one as well. This is a different log than the one that I talked about earlier in the video. But this is the end of a branch. You can see this cluster right here. But again, this is Xylobulus frustulatus or ceramic parchment. It helps to break down oak trees by breaking down the lignin, the cellulose, and the hemicellulose. So if you're looking for this, you want to look in oak-dominated forests, but other hardwood trees as well. You'll usually find them on oak trees though. So I finally found an edible species. And this one is known as amber jelly roll or Exidia rhizza. So we talked about a crust fungus, we talked about rhizomorphs. This is a jelly fungus. And this one typically grows on hardwood sticks here in Western Pennsylvania. You don't really see them on stumps, you don't really see them on bigger branches, but sticks. And amber jelly roll is characterized by having caps that are attached to a single point to the stick. The caps are slightly translucent, so you can kind of see right through them and they're darker colored darker brown, black, purple. Amber jelly roll is very responsive to weather. So it is very cold right now. It's about 15 degrees outside. So this thing is frozen, but you could bring it home and it'll thaw out. When there's not a lot of precipitation, not a lot of rain, this thing will shrivel up. However, when it does rain, when there's a lot of precipitation out, it'll rehydrate, it'll plump back up. But if it is shriveled up, you can still harvest it and you can rehydrate it at home. This isn't the best tasting mushroom in the world. However, if you're looking to increase the diversity of your diet, if you're looking to get more wild species in your diet, especially in the winter months, perhaps you'd consider bringing this one home and cooking it up. Now, it might resemble another species, but an edible species, which is auricularia, or the wood ear mushroom. However, wood ear is typically a little larger than this, and the color's a little lighter, so it's more like a cinnamon brown tan color. This one is a little smaller, and it's more translucent, so you can kind of see right through it. But again, this is Exidia rhizza or amber jelly roll, an edible fungus that can be found this time of year. Well, I found another log with armillaria rhizomorphs all over it, so I'll check this spot back in the fall for some honey mushrooms. What I did find right next to it is a very interesting stick. Now, most people looking at this stick would say, I don't see anything special about this. I don't see any signs of fungal growth on it. It kind of looks like that it was burnt, with this black material on it and then it smoldered for a bit. But actually, this burnt-like material is a fungus known as common tar crust or diatripe stigma. And this fungus is characterized by having these smooth black cracked sheets on it that sometimes engulf the whole stick. And you'll see a lot of it on hardwood sticks in hardwood forests. Now we talked earlier about a white rot fungus, which is Xylobulus frustulatus. This is a soft rot fungus. Soft rot fungi are characterized by breaking down cellulose and hemicellulose. Those are two plant cell wall compounds. So it's helping to break that down. And soft rot fungi also prefer wood of higher moisture content and higher nitrogen content. So if you're looking around your hardwood forest and you pick up sticks and you look at them and you see that it looks like it's burnt, look a little closer and see if it actually might be this common tar crust or diatripe stigma. You know, as much as I'd like to continue talking about the frequently overlooked mushrooms and other fungi, I'm gonna have to stop right here today because the battery life doesn't last too long in this camera, especially when it's 15 degrees outside. But if you'd like to continue learning more about mushrooms, plants, and other creatures of the wild, consider going to learnyourland.com and joining the community of naturalists and other nature enthusiasts. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date with all the videos that I plan on releasing in the near future. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.